Yeah, that's where he was, and you can see the whites just this side of the bulk line, but he thought, well, maybe the snooker might pay better dividends rather than risking the cut. I don't know how he does this. He holds the rest off the table. I mean, that takes a little bit of strength in your wrist to do that, I can tell you. Cover that red. And the blues come to the rescue, as you can clearly see. So that was a bit of a result he had there. Neil's maybe thinking, no, I can't. Oh, I should have potted the yellow and tried to get on a red. Yeah, the yellow didn't seem that difficult, as you said. He was above the park line, so. Certainly worth taking on. It's good safety. We haven't really seen a Neil Robertson special yet in this match. We've seen a few long pots from Mike Williams. Let's see how close he can get to this. It's a type of pot he's so good at, but he hasn't had to play many of them. One. It's a bit more like the Neil Robertson we've been watching for the last few seasons. Brilliant potter. There, but it's worked out okay. I'd love to get on the blue after potting this red because that would open up the two reds into this bottom right hand corner pocket. Wow. Neil Robertson three. What a surprising miss from Neil Robertson. This is a delicate little shot. Is that close to these are together. And has he got it? Good shot. Excellent One. pot. Just felt the red over the right hand corner pocket was just a little bit difficult coming over those reds. But excellent pot there from Mark Williams. Yeah, how he didn't push that. He was so close to it. That that required a lot of skill just to to dab at the <laughs> cue ball like that. Six. Seven. It's perfectly played. It's worth another look. Look how close he was. You've got to get that cue out of the way quickly. And he did. Thirteen. So he's a floater and now he's a dabber. <laughs> angle he'd really have to power this to move the red and if he missed it he'd snooker himself might just pop this and then play the snooker
28. Mark Williams, 28. That's a good hit. It's even better now, although the wonders are a little bit sticking out there because if there is, it might be a guide to pot the red, but I'm not sure if there's enough. He might have to come off the ball cushion. Well, there was enough sticking out and he wasn't far off potting it. Well, it's a red ball fight, you'd have to say. Whoever pots this last red, the way the colours are situated, you would think would win the frame. They played that very well. Just about see the outside of the red. How's the pace on this? This could be in behind the black. Oh, not quite. And a chance for Neil Robertson for another one of his long specials. Oh, he knows how close that was to going in behind the black. It's about the best he could do, but I think he's straight enough on the yellow to drop the yellow in the middle pocket. It will come back on its spot and he'll be perfectly on it again. Oh, he's missed it. I don't know whether it kicked, but... Mark Williams won. Or whether he just cured it poorly. Right. Maybe he did get a heavy contact there. Yeah, it looked like the, the yellow did lift off the bed of the table there, didn't it? Yeah, Robertson getting the cue ball clean. This is sort of an indication that he may have got a kick. And that's very unfortunate for Mark Williams because it looks like he may have handed Two. this frame to Neil Robertson. <coughs> yes, he handed him the first frame with a poor safety shot, but on that occasion I think it was uh, a little unfortunate to get a bad contact. Five. Doesn't want to be straight on this blue when he's overrun it. He's got to go in and out of bark. And again, we may see some of his cue part. There's the angle. He's got to go in and out of bark with a lot of topspin. I'm not quite sure whether he'll screw back and leave the long pink here, but he has the cue part in his armory to go. There you see he is screwing back a little bit, so he's going to leave a long pink. 14. Big shot for Neil Robertson. Must get on the black also. <coughs> and he's done that beautifully. Well, believe it or not, it could be 3-0 to Mark Williams as it is. Neil Robertson would be pleasantly pleased with what's happened out there. And he leads two frames to one. Once again, a very nice little steal from... Uh
Neil Robertson, and that's getting a bit costly from Mark Williams' perspective. You must really start stewing sitting in your chair when that something happens. Yeah, to you. I mean, it, it, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I think it was a bad contact because Neil had the white, the white clean, so um, a little bit, a little bit unfortunate. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, as Dennis said, it could have been three 0 up easily. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we've actually had a couple of emails. You mentioned at the start, gentlemen, that uh, Mark Williams is playing with a new cue. Uh, one in particular from Alexander Williams in Edinburgh. Hi, Alexander. Who says uh, hello to everybody? And can you tell us why he might be playing with a new cue and what sort of effect it'll have on him? Well, it, it, it told me that he wasn't happy with his long game. He said, as all snooker players exaggerate, anything over six foot I can't pot. Um, so I think his old cue was a little bit thicker. And with these cloths, if you put any side, it pushes, it exaggerates, it pushes the white offline more, especially if you hit it a bit harder. So, um, so that, that, that was the reason behind it. But I said to him, Mike, you went from like 47 in the rankings back up to world number one winning tournaments and now you want to change your cue. I was, I was quite surprised. And do you think that it will pay dividends ultimately? Have you seen any difference it's, it's, so His far? long game has been quite good today. He missed a bad blue, a long, a long blue there where he, he, every player plays shots with, and with sort of help inside, as it were, to sort of help the pot. But he hit, hit the white straight on. He hit the blue, missed the blue by a long way into the yellow pocket, I think. So it, it'll take a bit of getting used to. What does that decision to use the new cue say to you, John? Sorry? What, is it, what does the decision tell oh, you? Um, well, it's like golfers, they're always looking for something, aren't they? There's always something different. They might, he might have had one session of snooker where he's missed a couple of balls and he decided that was it. The thing with, with uh, a snooker cue is it's been a living thing, it's been timber and it's, you know, they all play differently. Some cues throw, some, some are straight. You've had enough cues in the last few yeah. years as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm constantly so. searching for something to match my original cue that got smashed, so it's, it's difficult. Yes. You know, I had a, the cue that I won the championship was the best cue I've ever had in, in my life. You know, I had that stolen and never really replaced it after that. Um, a couple of good cues were made for me, but they were never as good as the one I had. And you just, you know, you had the utmost trust in it. You, you have faith in it. You know that every shot you're going to play, it's capable of doing what you want it to do. So, I mean, it's just this trial and error. He probably may have tried three or four before he's got the one he wants. I don't know. Maybe he's done that. But um, you've got to have faith in what you're using. Yeah, and indeed you have to have faith in the airlines that you travel with because yours got <laughs> smashed, didn't it? Absolutely, coming through, yeah. coming through uh, yeah, in it a, an me airport. Yeah, you that for that, uh, to get that fella to do that for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you're not done too badly. With whichever queue you're using, Stephen, it has to be said. Uh, right, we're nearly going back there, but uh, last one before the interval here and just assess from Neil Robertson's perspective the way he's playing because he's had to be sharp about the, the final stages of the frames that we've seen so far. Oh, in general terms, though, John, how do you think he's playing? How does he look today? He's competing. That's the big thing, which you'd expect him to do. Um, it's interesting. He missed a long red again there. I'm, I'm harping on about it, but yeah. it's so unusual for him, who's got such a good long game. I mean, I did, I'm looking at that thinking, I don't know whether I fancy him with the, with the long pots at the minute. The other night against Mark Allen, Mark Allen got quite a few opportunities from Neil Robertson's misses on the long pot. So that's one department he'll have to improve on. But his overall competitive instinct is, is very solid. Did you notice that deficiency in the long game the other night, Stephen? And how surprised are you at this? Yeah, and it, the, the, he missed a long red there in that frame, and, it, and he didn't play it positively. You know, the, Neil Robertson, when he pots the ball, you can you know really hit the back of the pocket with a thud. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I think he relies on that as a big part of his game, to sort of, and it gives you huge confidence when they're going in. So if he's not happy, then, then it will affect him. But as John says, he's competing well. I mean, he must be delighted he's 2-1 up. And yet in the match the other night against Mark Allen, I mean, for my money, he was absolutely pin sharp when it came to clearing up in frames. I mean, his competitive instincts certainly were not dulled for all of the prospective deficiencies in that oh, long no, game. Oh no, his short game was spot on. Yeah. I mean, his cue ball control the other night was fantastic. And when he had a